Let's talk about the Ford Maverick powertrains. Lots of questions going around, lots of people who seem to be sure that the 2 liter EcoBoost is not a reliable powertrain, whereas there's others saying that the 2.5 liter hybrid system isn't trustworthy. It's not reliable because it's just too new and too recent. Well, these two things are actually pretty far from the truth. I'm Johnny from Johnny's Car Care and Reviews, and I don't want any of you getting fooled because these engines have been around for quite some time and I highly, highly suspect, and it's not just a suspicion, history would prove it, that these powertrains are going to last you and be about as reliable and loyal to you as, well, this pooch right here. So they're powertrains built to last quite some time and they've been around also for quite some time and really these days there's two things going on with the Ford Maverick. First of all, it's sold out for the 2023 model year. Now, if you already have one on order, if you're one of the lucky ones, you do need to know that the hybrid, well, Ford's gonna be able to produce about half as many as the actual demand. There's a, demands at 72% and Ford can make 35% of the Maverick production as hybrids, meaning, you know, I did some quick math. It means that roughly 30,000 people who want a hybrid are not going to get a hybrid. So the question arises, should you follow Ford's advice and switch to the power boost engine? Well, some people are saying, don't do that. That's not reliable. You can't trust the two liter turbo. I can tell you that early on, we did see some two liter turbos with actually some complete failure. We saw a handful of them locally and you know out of hundreds sold we saw a handful and you know these well two handfuls you could say it was in the tens tens to twenties and what was going on is that the radiator fluid was going into the engine because of a faulty gasket. Now that has been resolved and since then the 2 liter EcoBoost engine with its 250 horsepower and 277 pound-feet of torque because we are now on generation 2 is extremely reliable. So when order banks open up again hopefully the hybrid situation will be resolved and you can grab a hybrid if that's what you want. Now don't be fooled, don't listen to people saying that the hybrid is not a reliable powertrain. It's been around since 2010 and actually the 2 liter EcoBoost has been around for over 10 years as well. Now the 2 liter power boost of course the eco boost sorry not power boost you got the two liter eco boost it's running really good power numbers and it's going to pull 2,000 pounds with complete ease and if you get the 4k towing package it's going to pull 4,000 pounds pretty well now the hybrid is more fuel efficient but here's a small tip and a good trick figure out are you driving mostly on the highway if so if 90 percent of your driving is in you know roughly 40 mile per hour or faster zones. If you're mostly driving, let's say your average speed is about 60 miles per hour, go on the window sticker and compare a window sticker a hybrid versus a two liter EcoBoost. There's not that huge of a difference in fuel economy. Now those window stickers, they do give you an estimate on fuel economy per year. Try to figure out how what's the cost difference per year because for a lot of you that are doing you know mostly highway you might only be looking at a few hundred dollars difference likely are looking at a few hundred dollars per year unless you drive a lot of extra kilometers now of course the hybrid engine is a really good powertrain but it's sold out so the hybrid engines first came out in the 2010 fusion uh this is a 2.5 liter Duratrek engine. So it's been a lot around for quite some time. It's very reliable. And actually Wikipedia is the first source that I find that actually talks about the total torque of not just the gasoline engine, but also the electric motor. Uh, because the two running together, I'm actually quite pleased to, to be able to announce that Wikipedia has it at 173 pound-feet of torque 
which doesn't surprise me from driving the hybrid Maverick. I did find it actually surprisingly torquey and a lot of that comes from the electric motor giving you instant torque as soon as you touch that pedal. Now in just a moment, we will go outside and do a little walk around of a two liter EcoBoost because of course, for a lot of you, 30,000 of you or so, you should really consider switching to the EcoBoost. We'll do a little tour of the vehicle outside. What does it sound like inside? What does it sound like with that direct injection? Inline four cylinder, two liter turbo, Great power production, so there's not much to say about that. If you drive this two liter, you're going to love it. All right, let's check out the Ford Maverick EcoBoost. So this is what it sounds like, but let's find out really what it sounds like and looks like with that hood open. So don't spend all day looking for a latch, there is none. So if you pop this open just once and go look for a latch, you're out of luck. You need to push it, pull it twice, now because there's no latch it will now open otherwise it would not open and that's what the motor sounds like so the two liter EcoBoost it is a little quieter than the hybrid except for when the hybrid is in electric mode obviously it's dead silent in electric mode now that does seem a little loud and that's because it's direct injection so it is normal that there's that little tick 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 that fast ticking noise, that's the direct injectors working away. Now, some of you have been commenting, you know what, I'm getting tired, I might look, or maybe you've already bought, an, bought a Subaru. Now, Subaru four-cylinder engines are great engines if you do not get them with the turbo. That means you're gonna have less fun driving and less ease of towing if you don't have a turbo on your Subaru engine. And, well, overall, Subarus, when they do have a turbo engine, well, personally, my opinion on that is it makes me a little nervous for long-term ownership. Uh, just because of not just what I've read online, but also what I've personally seen. Um, you could say reputation-wise, you don't wanna be working hard uh, turbo, a uh, four-cylinder turbo from Subaru. Fantastic all-wheel drive system on their part, but I'm not the biggest fan of their turboed engine. Mind you, their four cylinders without the turbos are pretty indestructible. So if you do decide to wait out on a Maverick, if you don't have your order in now, uh, unfortunate, shouldn't, hopefully not a news flash. I don't want to be the bringer of bad news, but you know, don't shoot the messenger. Order banks are probably going to open sometime late summer or early fall 2023 for a 2024 model year Maverick. And when that happens, well, I do have a preference for the hybrid when you're not looking for a quick, fast, great towing powertrain. That would be the two liter EcoBoost. But why don't we, you know, just wrap up in talking about the hybrid and then go outside and review, do a walk around and listen to, and I'll really show you that two liter turbo, what it sounds like and what it feels like. But if you are looking at the hybrid, well, don't worry about its reliability. The transmission is an eCVT. Now I actually worry a lot about CVT transmissions because they're belt driven. Whereas this is actually, you know, a full, you know, gear set. We'll get into that in just a moment. But we, what we are looking at is the 2.5 liter Duratec Atkinson cycle inline for gasoline engine. And that's paired with an electric motor that produces 191 horsepower at 5,600 RPM and 155 pound feet of torque, which is what everyone talks about. But with that electric motor we're up to 173 pound feet of torque and it does feel actually relatively peppy it's a nice drive now the ecoboost is a fantastic drive that is giving you actually a lot of power and reliability but on you know that dirt dirt a 2.5 liter duratec engine is actually originally based off of a mazda platform it is extremely extremely reliable so no issues there whatsoever and the ecvt transmission is actually very similar to toyota's transmission that you'll find in the prius now this setup has been around for over 10 years it's reliable it has not been a problematic system whatsoever now with the 2.5 liter at duratec atkinson motor being coupled to that transmission that is an ECVT, so it's gear driven. I'm not worried about it at all. It has proven itself to be very reliable over the years. 
Now, the big question is, are you mostly doing city driving? There is a huge difference in fuel economy between the EcoBoost and the hybrid when it comes to city driving. You're gonna almost get twice as better fuel economy or use half as much fuel in the hybrid in the city. But on the highway, you're looking at about three or four miles per gallon. So not a world of difference. So for the, those of you that are thinking of maybe switching to the EcoBoost, but you're worried about it, or when order banks open up again, you want to get likely still get your Maverick sooner, you know, get it much faster. Currently you should get an EcoBoost. I think a lot of people are going to find that it's going to be, you know, about four to seven months. Whereas the hybrid, well, half of the people that ordered one aren't going to get one. So let's jump right to that EcoBoost, do a nice little walk around and see if maybe this is the right fit for you. But inside the vehicle, this is, you know, the sound deadening in this is decent considering outside that motor is pretty loud, but inside, not bad at all. Now I do like the interior. There've been a lot of complaints about the use of plastic, but I think the plastic in this is fantastic. It's got multiple designs. You see the little cutaways here to make it look sharp. You got space for your bottles. Gray and blue, not a usual combination. It actually looks pretty good. Ford did a great job. I think this uh, deserves design awards. See the seats here. Nice little touch with the orange stitching. Got the model with the back window. Now your roof is not, if you take the sliding moon roof, it's not huge, but it will let in a little extra light and air. Of course, we've got that transmission. Some people will complain about it, but you do get used to it. You just turn it into the gear you want. L is if you want the transmission to compress. Now on the hybrid, L is nice because it helps you actually regain more battery so the electric motor works harder to regain that energy and put it back towards the battery for use later on to get better fuel economy but i think switching to an ecoboost if you're doing mostly highway switching to an ecoboost is a smart choice because you're going to get an ecoboost much faster than a hybrid so i'd say if you do a lot of hybrid a lot of auto a lot of highway you should definitely consider switching off the hybrid onto an ecoboost unless and i do say unless unless you're you know a carryover order from 2022 or you're there on opening day opening morning ordering up your hybrid because they will not be able to produce everyone's hybrid and actually they're only going to be producing about half the demand so do consider switching to an eco boost you got a fantastic suspension you can add 4K towing and tow 4,000 pounds, in which case you get a brake controller right here. You can set it, more brakes to the back, less brakes for your trailer. And the orange accents in this, they do the trick. Took me a while to get used to them, but I'm liking them. Now the touch screen is at a certain angle. It's pretty straight up. Thing, its positioning is good and it is pretty good at actually cutting off glare because it's not higher up and it's not you know it is at an aggressive angle towards us but that does help with glare so in conclusion no matter what powertrain you do get we've got two great powertrains if you're going to be driving mostly on the highway we're only talking about three miles per gallon if you run that two point zero liter EcoBoost engine. So I highly recommend the EcoBoost engine. It's gonna pull great. It's gonna tow 2000 pounds much better than the hybrid. Now we did tow, you can catch our video on it. We towed in the worst possible conditions, real bad winter conditions. We towed 1500 pounds with the hybrid and it went very well. It was a breeze. Now, and it was actually breezy that day. It was during a snowstorm. Mind you, the EcoBoost would do it that much better. And of course, if you want to tow more than 2,000 pounds, you're going to go for that EcoBoost anyways. And the all-wheel drive system is a complete gem. While the hybrid front-wheel drive, it's intelligent front-wheel drive, it will get you to your destination. And it does do a great job of keeping you in, a, you know, in your desired direction using 
the power that it puts to each wheel to keep you in that desired direction. The EcoBoost all-wheel drive does it that much better. Both of these engines are reliable. Now the eight-speed transmission, it is less known. It's a bit of a somewhat unknown factor. It's been on the market for a couple of years now. And you know, long-term longevity, it still has some tests to prove. Thus far, it's been very good. Hasn't been a problematic transmission at all. It's been excellent. Let's, t you know, long-term testing, long-term longevity, that's not done yet. But thus far, it's fantastic. But don't be scared of the eCVT. That is not a belt-driven CVT. I'm really not a fan of those. They've had horrible reliability on the market thus far, pretty much from every manufacturer. This is an eCVT on the hybrid. It is gear-driven, and it is a very, very reliable, sturdy transmission. So really the only hitch with either of these is the availability of the EcoBoost. Now, if you are shopping something else, do consider, you know, some people are saying never again Ford because I waited too long for my Maverick. Keep in mind that all the averagely popular models have long wait times and the really popular ones have extremely long wait times. A Toyota RAV4, Prime, that's their plug-in SUV, a lot of dealerships, you're looking at five to six years to get that model. Now, Subaru, great job. They do have more available. Uh, their wait times are, when there are some, they're relatively short. But we've had a very weird two years, and you just do keep in mind that availability, if something's available, it's because what their production from that manufacturer went down as well, but they just don't have the type of demand that really popular models right now have. And that high demand versus lower supply than usual is creating some pretty bad wait times. Mind you, wait times on an EcoBoost, you can probably get one. If you've already ordered one, I'd say you should probably expect, you know, about from production, production starting up, four to maybe eight months, whereas a hybrid, half of you won't get one. So do consider making this swap. Both powertrains will last you like a good, loyal fur friend. They're gonna last you for years and years, and you're gonna love them. So I'm very confident in the Maverick. It's not the only model, obviously, that I like on the market, but it's the one that needs a lot of information and intel on these days. So please do like and subscribe to help support our channel, not miss out on any of that information, and to help dress and feed that poodle. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.